Hello and welcome. Today, film music, one of my passions in collecting records. Ever since I started collecting, which was when I was around 10, 11, 12. Um, back then it was really hard to find decent sounding records of film music apart from the latest soundtracks that have been issued. But that all started to change in the 70s and we'll be featuring some records uh, from that period. Um, today it's 10 records which are superb sounding collections of film music. So these are not soundtracks from a specific film, these are collections of a particular composer or a, com a particular genre. And some of these records are indeed killer sounding. I've tried to pick ones that are readily available either in current reissues or um, in reissues that don't cost too much, although there is an exception possibly in the very first one I'm going to show. Um, which, well, let's get right to it. This is a fantastic record. This is, and the perfect way into uh, the classic Hollywood sound. This is a record of music from the films of Eric Wolfgang Korngold. Now, Korngold was a child prodigy and he fled Germany in the 30s uh, to escape prosecution from the Nazis, came to Hollywood, and he basically invented the whole style of the modern Hollywood big orchestral score. He brought to bear the technique that had been used by Wagner in his operas where you have different themes, chords, etc. associated with particular characters and ideas, and it's called the leitmotif technique, and Korngold brought that to his movies uh, with brilliant effect, and he was also a master orchestrator. Uh, some of his most famous films are, th are films like uh, Captain Blood, The Seahawk, which is a particular favourite of mine. Now this record is very special. This was produced by the composer's son, George Korngold, who went on to actually play a, a major role in recorded film music. We'll come to that later. This was recorded by a Hollywood Scratch Orchestra. That will be the top Hollywood musicians and some of the best musicians in the world. Uh, recorded on one of the sound stages and it has this just fabulous authentic tube analog sound which has been replicated in this reissue on DCC Classics. This reissue came out in, I believe, the early 90s, early mid 90s. The original recording was made, uh, if memory serves me, around 61. Uh, so this just has the authentic Hollywood studio sound. Uh, you can see it's beautifully presented with lots of great liner notes and uh, a lovely insert which has pictures uh, of, the, of the posters from the films featured, and also, again, more notes. This is a great record to try and pick up. Um, it might cost you a little bit on the second-hand market, but it shouldn't be prohibitive. So, one of the big developments in presenting uh, film music on record came in the 70s, and it was because of George Korngold, who produced that last record. He was able to persuade RCA to launch a series of recordings featuring the music of the golden age of Hollywood composers. The RCA classic film series was remarkable for a number of things. First of all, it was the first time that a major label uh, did a project of taking film music seriously, issuing these individual albums dedicated to a particular composer or a particular star with excellent uh, documentation. Um, they researched the getting the right music, the correct versions of the scores, and these are genuine audiophile recordings recorded by the legendary Decker engineer Kenneth Wilkinson, and many of his records I'm sure you're familiar with um, on Decca. Some of them are the greatest recordings ever made. They're absolutely fantastic. And he used many of the same um, locations for the recordings that were used by Decca and RCA in their golden era. Um, the National Philharmonic Orchestra was the 
um, top sort of scratch orchestra of the time. So you had all the top session London musicians playing on these things and the records sound phenomenal. Quick caveat though, this is the time when RCA is uh, dumbing down, as it were, on its vinyl formulations. So sometimes finding a clean pressing is a little difficult, um, but I would definitely urge you to go for the English pressings. Um, I've had really good luck with them and they clean up really nicely and sound terrific. I could have picked any of these uh, records to show you. I've actually picked two. Um, here we go. Here's the first one. This is music by Franz Waxman, who, like Horngold, was one of the pioneers and, and, the, and the great uh, composers of Hollywood's Golden Age. This is a fantastic collection of music uh, from films like Sunset Boulevard, as you can see from this beautiful still on the cover with uh, Gloria Swanson in full flight. Um, we've also got music here from uh, the Bride of Frankenstein, which is a fantastic score. Uh, you've also got the Philadelphia Story, uh, Prince Valiant, and Hitchcock's Rebecca. Uh, this is a wonderful introduction to Waxman's uh, music. And like all these uh, issues, they come with a beautiful insert with extensive uh, liner notes written by uh, film historians. Next record I will show you from this series is a, is a real favorite of mine. Um, this is the record devoted to the music of Bernard Herrmann. Um, it's, and Herrmann himself selected the music here, working with Christopher Palmer. Christopher, Christopher Palmer is a, a very key figure in the revival of putting film music on record in a serious kind of way. Um, I actually met him and he was something of a mentor to me when I was working on uh, a master's thesis on Bernard Herrmann myself when I was at university. That's a whole other story. But um, Herrmann himself uh, selected the music for this record and it's an unusual selection. Um, Citizen Kane obviously is a great selection to have. It's, it's one of the greatest film scores ever made. But the um, other films are less well known. They, they're mainly B-movies, but what distinguishes um, them and all the music on this record is it's for very exotic instrumentation. So, for example, you've got music from On Dangerous Ground, uh, a film noir starring Robert Ryan, and it's the famous chase sequence, which Herman scores for a massive brass ensemble, including eight horns, uh, incredible percussion. He also has music on here from a film called White Witch Doctor, in which he uses many exotic instruments to evoke Africa, drums, a, um, a long obsolete instrument called the serpent, which he uses to portray uh, a, a, a rather nasty, creepy crawly who's going to attack someone. Um, there's also music from, uh, what is it called, Beneath the Twelve Mile Reef, uh, which is full of beautiful orchestrations for strings and harps. And then it's capped by um, Concerto Macabre, which is a sort of mini piano concerto, which he writes in the full um, romantic style stunning recording it is it's one of the best recordings of any kind of piano concerto i've heard so this is another great issue in the series i have a particular fondness for herman as you will discover if you watch more of these videos this one likewise comes with a um, beautiful insert with notes by christopher palmer uh, another distinguishing feature of this is, you may recall in Citizen Kane, there is the scene where um, Kane's protege and love interest, Susan Alexander, who has a very small kind of voice, not particularly strong, but he decides he wants to turn her into a, into a grand opera singer. He builds an opera house for her. And there is the scene where she is attempting to sing this opera 
And for the film, what Herman did was he wrote an aria uh, for full orchestra and then with a big solo soprano part, but very cleverly he got a singer who, was, who couldn't quite do it. And for the film that worked, you really got a sense of her struggle. But for the record, uh, we've got glamour casting Kirite Knauer at the beginning of her career and her performance is absolutely sensational. So, speaking of Herman, Herman is one of the great film composers, um, my personal favourite. Um, he worked obviously with Orson Welles, uh, Hitchcock very famously, but one of the reasons why he's been so recorded on record is because of his very exotic orchestrations, in particular doing films with Ray Harryhausen, all the famous stop-motion movies like Seven Voyage of Sinbad and uh, Jason and the Argonauts. Now, there are a number of records issued of these scores, uh, mainly on Decca. Now, I've picked one which has been reissued by Org, and it's a beautiful deluxe 2 LP, 45 RPM. Um, this is the cover of the London Records release back when it came out in the 70s. This is actually the original Decca release, which I also have, also an, in an incredible sounding record. But having it in a new uh, audiophile pressing, uh, mastered, by, um, mastered by the great Bernie Grumman, uh, at 45, this sounds incredible. Uh, you've got a nice fold out with lots of notes. Um, this is an absolutely stunning record. Uh, we've got music here from The Three Worlds of Gulliver, um, which is so much fun. What Herman does is he bases his music on the forms of and the style of Handel but then what he does is he orchestrates it for a huge orchestra with exotic combinations of instruments and percussion. Uh, we've also got music here from um, Mysterious Island and Jason and the Argonauts. Again, stunning use of the orchestra. Um, so this was one of a number of records that Decker put out with Herman conducting himself. Um, another famous one of the time you can see up here is the fantasy film world of, of Herman. Uh, I was going to feature that, but then I thought, no, this, this is in print um, and readily available. So this is a great place to start. Fantastic record. It will put your system through its paces. Now, a complete change of style. My other favourite... Um, film music composer, and that is John Barry. Uh, this is a excellent reissue of scores, a selection of his music on Speaker's Corner. Again, readily available. I will later be doing a, a special video on John Barry, uh, but I thought this would be a great selection to highlight. We've got music here from uh, the Bond movies, all the great themes um, from the early Bond movies, like the James Bond theme uh, from Russia with Love. And then you've got a really nice selection of uh, his other film music, uh, The Chase, uh, The Knack, The Ipcris File. Again, highlighting his wonderful, subtle use of unusual instruments, wonderful melodic sense. Uh, jazz infused, uh, it doesn't get any better. And this reissue is superb. Um, it's just got an extra amount of air and uh, just a beautiful sound around, around the recording. I, I couldn't recommend it more highly. Now, one of my passions is the, uh, and guilty pleasures, is the Decca phase four series of records. Um, these were issued through the 60s and 70s, mainly of light, easy listening music, but also a lot of classical music. It was a very artificially uh, manipulated kind of sound, 
but it was Decker. So it's even though it's not a realistic layout of the orchestra and they do a lot of highlighting of particular instruments, um, it, they sound great. Now, this is a record that I picked up. Uh, it came out in 1971 and I bought this in 1971. I was in the record store and I saw this fantastic cover, the Phase 4 World of Thrillers. And I mean, how could I resist? I mean, look at that cover. It's just too much fun. And what this is, is a sampling of music from the Phase 4 catalogue. And with a, with a particular focus on the sort of spy thriller genre. Now, it kicks off <laughs> with a very strange version of the opening theme from 2001. And this, at the time, people were really getting into Moog synthesizers and electronics. And of course, Decker wasn't going to ignore that trend. So this is 2001 blended with electronics, uh, electronic instruments. And it's ridiculous, but it's too much fun. But elsewhere on here, they highlight some of their top artists in the catalog, in particular, Roland Shaw and his orchestra, uh, Stanley Black. You've got music from Spellbound, Hitchcock's Thriller, Route 66, a beautiful recording called The Windmills of Your Mind, featuring La Chorale des Enfants de l'Opera de Paris, that is the children's choir from the Paris Opera House. Beautiful track. You've got music from Leonard, um, from Elmer Bernstein's stunning score for The Man with the Golden Arm, uh, that starred Frank Sinatra as a heroin addict. And you've got some of Roland Shaw's, um, uh, Roland Shaw's re-recordings of James Bond music. You've got Bernard Herrmann conducting the main title from North by Northwest. This is a fabulous record, sort of compendium of music from the Decca Phase 4 catalogue. Highly recommended. I'm sure you can pick it up for not too much money. And since we're mentioning Decca Phase 4, and Ronan Shaw, I will again be doing a video specifically on Ronan Shaw's uh, albums. But just to show you for the moment, here's one of them. Again, these fantastic uh, 60s, 70s covers. Uh, this is all music from secret agent spy movies uh, done by Ronan Shaw. Fantastic arrangements. For me, these are the only cover versions of John Barry which are any good. And in fact, some of them are even better than the originals. Great fun. I will be doing a separate video on these records in the future. Another film composer we just have to mention. Um, he kind of defines a lot of the film music sound of the, of the late 50s, 60s, 70s. Is Henry Mancini. Now... I could have shown a bunch of any of the records that he himself recorded with his band uh, over many years. These are all great records and I will be doing a feature on him later. This is a record you may not have come across uh, because as you can tell I'm English and I grew up in England. Um, I have a lot of British pressings. Music for Pleasure, which is the label that this is on, uh, was a budget label which did all kinds of stuff. They reissued uh, older classical records and they commissioned a lot of new recordings of standard pop fair and film music fair. This is an absolutely wonderful collection of Henry Mancini's music recorded beautifully. Um, now, it's the guy who produce this record is something of a legend in these circles of, of light music, etc. His name was Anton Kwiatkowski. And it, it actually says here an Anton Kwiatkowski production. Um, and his records are worth seeking out. They're really beautifully done. Great arrangements, beautifully recorded. It's a less close-up sound than you might be used to with Mancini-style music more of a mid-hall kind of ambience. Um, but
but terrific. And you've got on here all the greats. You've got the Pink Panther, Baby Elephant Walk, Moon River, Peter Gunn, A Shot in the Dark, Charade. It's, it's a great collection. Speaking of Phase 4, uh, I wanted to feature at least one record uh, in the series of film music uh, score uh, selections that were put out by Stanley Black. Uh, he did a whole seri series of these and they cover a huge range of film music repertoire. They're beautifully recorded, great fun. But I picked this particular one, which includes music from uh, Casablanca, um, Love Story, Gone with the Wind because this was also issued in a beautiful, very prestigious audiophile version, uh, King Super Analog. This was a label out of Japan, uh, collaborating with Cisco Music. Uh, Cisco Music went on to become Impex. And what, they, what was a little unusual about King Super Analog is that they actually, um, went back to the master tape and to a degree remixed from the original tape. So it's not just a remastering, it's a slight remixing. I'm a huge fan of the King Super Analog records. Uh, they pick wonderful uh, records, mainly from the Decca catalog. And this is a record, I mean, I picked this up for like 20, 30 bucks at Amoeba Music. You can find this, you can certainly find it online. Um, the original, this is actually the London copy, Decca London, yeah, that'll sound great, but if you can find this, it sounds even better. Now here's something rather fun. Um, this is not mastered from analog, it's from digital, uh, but this is just too much fun. Um, music primarily from TV series of the 60s and 70s uh, put out on this great label, Soul Jazz Records. Um, it's a double LP. It features all kinds of fabulous music. Some of it's library music, some of it's stuff written specially for TV. All these great notes. Um, beautiful and <laughs> eye-catching for the gentleman of uh, these, these, this cover art. Um, there are two volumes of this, too much fun. They actually sound great, highly recommended. Finally, um, last but not least, um, John Williams. Um, couldn't do a video like this without featuring uh, something by him. There have been lots of collections over the years, but I thought I would feature this amazing box set. Um, let me just get it down for you. This came out a few years ago. Here we go. I think it's still readily available. I hope it is. Um, this is basically a collection of three albums, uh, two albums that were put out on CD and then a newly recorded album. Uh, mastered digitally, but mastered beautifully. It sounds Wonderful. We've got a beautiful uh, booklet. Lots of photos and notes. And then you've got the three records. We've got this one, the classic Spielberg scores. The Spielberg-Williams collaboration. And then the new one, um, some new stuff specially recorded uh, for this issue. Um, so what you get in this set is a, a great overview of all the music he's written for Spielberg's movies. Um, but you've got stuff that isn't quite so well known. Like, for example, in, on this one, you've got some music from... Um, the, the fourth Indiana Jones movie. You've got some music from Amistad, the BFG. Um, you've got stuff from Tintin, which I think is a is a terrific score. Uh, music from Saving Private Ryan. These are beautifully presented. Here's a, a photo of a recording session. 
Um, can't recommend this too highly if you're a, a, a John Williams fan. Anyway, um, let's see, just quickly show you. It's from the centerfold from one of the other ones. And this. Oh, there we go. Yeah, this is a lovely collection and uh, highly recommended. So there we are. Until the next time, many thanks for watching.